people who were listening to Triple J, the cool kids at school were liking this song. And then I kind of felt like, okay, it's cool to like Kylie again. I'm going to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the dork, the little gay kid that everyone picks on at school anymore. They've realised that, you know what, he's been onto something this whole time and we're liking her too. And it made me feel like that I could fit in with them. I was kind of cool again. I completely (laughs) agree with you. Welcome to Kylie Behind the Scenes, a show where two Kylie Minogue super fans delve deep into her ever-evolving wardrobe to discuss the amazing costumes and what they mean to us. I'm Owen, also known as Owen Minogue. And I'm Joe. I'm not known as a Minogue, but you can think of me as the Nick Cave of this duo. Uh, <laughs> you'll get to know us as Owen Joe, and we've been friends for about 20 years or so. As Give our or take, yeah. Kylie Orbit, yeah, that's right, as our Kylie Orbit's intertwined. And uh, we're now a group of a, we're part of a group of friends called the, the Kylie Crew, and yep. we're here today to sort of give you a more personal perspective of Kylie's incredible wardrobe. Yeah. We've lined up six episodes featuring pieces that are old, some that are new, and also some favourite items of ours, as well as some pieces that are really not highly profiled, I guess you could say. So we're going to give you some special insights into those pieces and the steps that are also taken to preserve these pieces at Art Centre Melbourne. Sounds amazing. So with that, let's get to it. Awesome. Let's go. So I'm going to be a little mischievous with this um, <laughs> piece that we're going to talk about today. Could, could that be a clue there? Owen? Um, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> so I've written down a few things and let's just see if you can get them. So It's a mini dress. It's made of lycra. It has an asymmetrical neckline, asymmetrical hemline, has some coloured stripes, turquoise, pinks, oranges. That's definitely... (laughs) You get where I'm going I I completely get where you're going, although with Minogue, mini dress and asymmetrical and lycra could be a lot of things. (laughs) Okay, so... Designed by William Baker around the era of 1997 we're going. So, got any hints yet? There's absolutely an impossible okay. princess in there. <laughs> Definitely impossible princess. So, we're going to uh, the music video for Did It Again. Amazing. And this piece is kind of one of my favourites. Um, oh, I just don't know what it is about it. Maybe it's to do with some nostalgic feels there, but it's we're going to be looking at Dance Kylie. A perfection. Yes. Love that. <laughs> So, as I was saying, it was designed by William Baker. Um, There is some hand mending that's been done on the seams to preserve it, just to sustain the fabric and its structure as well. It was created for the character of Dance Kylie. For those who haven't seen the music video, you might just want to press pause on us right now so then you can go have a look at the music video. You might get a little bit more context and then you can come back and pick up from where we are now. (laughs) It's four incarnations of Kylie's personas as perceived by the media in a lineup, and they're all kind of battling for domination and supremacy in this music video. It's so probably one of her best, I have to say. One of my, <laughs> I, you know what? I will say it's my, it's my top number one um, music video for Kylie, just because of that, because it touches base on so many incarnations that we all know about her. And I guess it also, in that music video, they're kind of battling it out because there was so much, so many um, things in the media where they mocked all these different personas and she's kind of, yeah, they're clawing their way to the top to say, no, this is who I am, even though they are all part of her at the same time. It's like a Kylie greatest hits all in all one in one package. I think <laughs> even William Baker said it's kind of like, um, it's an amalgamation of the Spice Girls all in one person. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually perfect. So for those, again, who haven't seen the music video, um, we have Dance Kylie, we have Sex Kylie, which she's wearing like a turquoise lycra dress with like a snakeskin print on it, bleach blonde hair, heavy mm-hmm. eye makeup and like blonde split ends. Um, we've got Cute Kylie, she's wearing like a little fringe crop top and matching um, pants as well. We've got Indie Kylie, which was kind of representing where she was That's at the time with releasing Impossible Princess. M- my favourite in the yeah. film clip. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dance Kylie, which is what we're um, looking at today. Kylie met William Baker, um, who designed this dress and some of the other um, outfits in the music video. Uh, Back in 1994, he was working at Vivian Westwood's uh, flagship store in London and Kylie went in as a customer. And I know people are probably going to fact check me on this and that's perfectly okay. (laughs) But from my understanding is they hit it off so well. They went and had a coffee across the road at one of the cafes and later on would then be, I guess, on Kylie's payroll um, as a stylist for the Impossible Princess album. So he assisted with a lot of 
the styling and um, the creative direction for that album as well as then going on to be um, creative director for the Intimate and Live Tour, which followed the following year in 1998. So he came up with all the, the concepts of the staging and the lighting and all of that that come with that, um, which is an amazing step in career, I guess, when you're just working at a shop and this amazing superstar walks in and <laughs> you hit it off, you become friends and next minute you're their creative director. That's that's the thing too, with all of the work that he did, it's it's great to hear that even then with the Katarina photo shoot that even a master at some point has to be an apprentice. First. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, yes. So it's, it's, I, I like that that's how he got his uh, kind of Kylie stripes <laughs> on yeah. a photo shoot. Yeah, that's great. The other, One of the other things that I've noticed in regards to this um, item as well, we know that during that era we were looking at Kylie's ever-evolving persona from the girl next door through to um, more of an indie dance or even rock artist, which really helped um, pave that way. But I've also noticed that there was some, I could be wrong, but this is just from complete observation that there is this, I don't know, it's cleverly placed continuity in regards to this particular dress. So if you look at the colours in there, you've got your pinks, you've got your turquoise, you've got your blues. And when you look at the Impossible Princess artwork, the cover, she's got the lights that surround her while she's... The turret. Yeah, the turret. Um, And those colours are exactly the same as this dress. So I'm wondering if that was um, purposefully done or if that was, yeah, Yeah, something that just happened coincidentally. You know, that's a great point. It's actually something that I'd probably not ever noticed. I, I know that within the clip itself that, that this costume is the one that unifies everything. That, yeah. That brings the, the other three characters' colour story together. Yeah. But I'd never made that connection with, with the album artwork, actually. I could be completely wrong. It could just be pure coincidence, but it was just something that I picked up on when um, researching bits for this no, particular that. item that... Um, that's, I don't know, it just seemed to fit in. I'm like, hmm, is this done on purpose or is it not? Pure coincidence. <laughs> Fantastic. So, Owen, being that it was 1997 and where she was in, in, in her career, what stands out as significant during that time? I think career-wise, even though the album wasn't, the album got delayed for release over in the UK because of the death of Princess Diana. It got didn't get released over there, I think, until 1998. But significant career um, moments, I guess, during this period, um, which is really important to Australia, um, Australian music history as well, is that she wasn't, she was never um, taken seriously as an no. artist. People just thought, bubblegum pop, and we, this is kind of what the costume represents. It was that character, that, a part of Kylie that wasn't taken serious. Yeah, she was just a singing budgie yes, at one point. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't until she released this album that... Um, The media woke up, the general public in Australia woke up and realised, hold on, Kylie is actually a singer-songwriter. She Mm. wrote 90% or even 98%, I guess, Mm. of these songs on this album. And then when she went on tour with um, Intimate and Live, people saw her as a legitimate live performer. She had the full live band, backing singers. There was no really any sequenced music. There was no extra add-ins. It was her and band and people got to see Kylie for what she really was and it made Australia fall in love with her again because there was that period where she, like, she kind of died off a little bit and it wasn't until, like, I guess the deconstruction era with Confide in Me and then... Also, I think it was that song and Where the Wild Roses Grow, she started getting that recognition with Triple J. So she was actually getting... What a song. (laughs) Yeah. She was getting that recognition. She was played on Triple J, which is more of your indie um, radio. She was making the Hot 100 with, I think, Confide in Me and did it again as well. So It would have been unheard of to even think think of of that. Think of Kylie being... (laughs) Exactly. She was never, ever going to be on that list if you just take the start of her career as the basis for it. Yeah, exactly. So there was that shift in career progression. People started falling in love with her again. And that's kind of where it comes into a personal connection for me and why I love this dress and why I love this era so much. And if I'm talking too much, take over, please. But (laughs) the reason why this dress means so much to me is because I fell in love with that bubblegum pop Kylie. But as you're getting into your teens, it really wasn't kind of cool to like Kylie so I kind of kept it to myself (laughs) Um, (laughs) even though there would be kids at school that would buy smash hits and rip out posters and go oh you like Kylie do you want this but they'd have to make sure who was on the back first before they gave (laughs) me the poster (laughs) but um, 
it was this um, this particular song. I think that people started like people who were listening to Triple J, the cool kids at school were liking this song, and then I kind of felt like, okay, it's cool to like Kylie again. I'm gonna. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the dork, the little gay kid that everyone picks on at school anymore. They've realised that, you know what, he's been onto something this whole time and we're liking her too and it made me feel like that I could fit in with them. I was kind of cool again. <laughs> I completely agree with you. That's exactly what it was. I was yeah. at uni at the time and uh, there we had this guy in our class who was very muso. He had some musician friends and, yeah. you know, people that are even established now within the scene. So uh, he, he was, um, there was a, a level of musical snobbery, let's say. Yeah. And uh, the fact that she was cool again was proven to me because one day I took the CD in and had the the, the lyrics and I showed him and, and I said, well, what do you think of this? But yeah. I didn't tell him who it was. And he couldn't believe just how deep they were and, and, oh, yeah. and that they resonated for him personally as well. And mm. then when I said to him, oh, well, they're Kyla Minogue lyrics and she wrote them, I think it was, it was, did it again actually and Too Far. Oh, yeah, and Too Far's amazing. Couldn't believe yeah. it. And and he was like, no, they're not. And, and <laughs> I, they are and that's why I didn't tell you who it was because yeah. I wanted you to appreciate Shape them for the what artistry. they were yeah. and that's exactly what it was she yeah. arrived with impossible princess as an artist yes exactly that yeah i totally agree uh, and then I think even further to that, at that time, you know, the Impossible Princess era as a whole, you, they had the the Nick Cave, as you mentioned, the, the duet, Where the Wild Roses Grow. Yeah. And even he was lauding her ability and, you know, they did the Poetry Olympics where she had to recite oh, I Should Be So Lucky That's as a right, poem. Yeah. And, and having that level of in, endorsement from somebody like him who was part of the Australian music scene was so revered and respected. Yeah. Added further to the kind of cool factor that we we discovered that she'd established at the time. Yeah, because he even said Better the Devil You Know was one of his favourite Kylie songs. So um, to get that from this musical god that he is um, and to get that recognition is... um, Definitely comes with the gold star or the stamp of approval too. Completely. Well, because you're appreciating then the the content and not just how it sounds. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another story as well that I can remember being told. It could have been one of the um, public chats that I did at uh, Art Centre Melbourne a couple of years ago. There was a Nick Cave fan there and they were in a recording session with Nick. He's so tight yeah. with his fans. They yeah. got to sit into the <laughs> studio when he was recording and he had the recording of Where the Wild Roses Grow and played it to his mum over the phone and said, do you like that? And her response was, oh, that um, she sounds beautiful. Who is it? And when he told her that it was Kylie, she was he, she was like, oh, my God, you've got to keep her on that track. She sounds amazing. That's incredible. Yeah, so I, he, he didn't throw in the bit that he kills her with a rock. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> No, not at all. But that's just, it just goes on to show that there are, we do have these amazing musicians that took her serious. It was just sad that pre um, Kylie Minogue 94 and pre Impossible Princess that people didn't take her seriously, whether it was the media or the general um, music lovers, they didn't look at her as being an artist. But yeah, this definitely, Nick's seal of approval plus the direction she went in with this really um, was the seal approval for uh, her being taken seriously as a musician and live performing artist at the time. Yeah, completely. And once again gave fans the opportunity to say, told you so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what, like I've told you what my special connection is and yeah. why I love this so much, but um, yeah. Please, please tell me more about your special connection. For me, this is probably Impossible Princess is my favourite album of any artist of all time. Uh, So, you know, that era is quite special in that regard. Um, Mm. uh, It was also the first time I got to meet her. It oh, was wow. a CD signing at HMV yes, in Burke Street. I remember that, yeah. And I was in art class and literally told my lecturer, sorry, I need to go. Uh, <laughs> she asked me why and I <laughs> said, I have to meet Kylie, which was get a CD signed. But that's <laughs> what I said. <laughs> and she became real, as silly as that sounds, but yeah. it was. she wasn't somebody that you just listened to on the radio or saw in a magazine or heard. And there was this kind of, not that the mystique because she would always have that, but it became tangible that I'd then seen a live show and yeah. she became somebody that 
actually physically existed. It wasn't just this kind of fantasy in your head. Yeah. And I often say, if you want to get to know me, listen to the Impossible Princess album because I it it sounds that album sounds like how Gemini feels, and that's my star sign. Yeah. And kind of weirdly, it doesn't surprise me that she's a Gemini as well because of the the sort of themes of contradiction in that album. Which is like it's, this music video too. Well, that's exactly <laughs> what I'm about yeah. to bring up because it feels like, you know, the, the star sign, uh, the symbol for Gemini is the two twins and it's like having the little good e- and evil kind of conscience the on conscience, your shoulder yeah. battling it out together. And then that's what she was kind of going through with that album and what she was trying to express. Mm. Then this clip happens and you literally have that kind of conscience battle happening at the same time. Art representing life. It really yeah. was. And then as somebody, as a fan, that that I could take that on. I, and I was also one of those people that never understood the, oh, this album speaks to me kind of phenomena. Yeah. I, I didn't get it. And that was the first time where I, I could sort of say, yeah, I get it now. That, that makes sense. So you can appreciate something on a, on a deeper level. So... For me at that time, that's that's what that whole era kind of represents. And the fact that then that she was cool yeah, just was sort of the icing on the cake. And people's response to you was different too. I remember being younger and, and people would say, oh, you're a Kylie fan. And the answer was, oh. And then it became, oh, cool. Like yeah. you had that kind of interaction with people where you could – Not necessarily that it was sort of be ashamed of it, but that you could be proud that you were proud of her. Yeah, I get that. I completely get that. And you were talking about seeing her live for the first time as well. Um, I didn't get to go to that show. Uh (laughs) Camped out my first experience. Uh, My pet, like, um, I just couldn't afford to go. I was in year 11 at the time and because I couldn't go to the show, I kept trying to win tickets on Fox (laughs) FM in the morning. They gave them away with the morning show and I'd be there trying to, call up quickly before I had to go to school. (laughs) And I said to one of the girls at school who absolutely loves her as well, I said, do you want to just go wait outside the Palais Theatre and see if we can say hi or get an autograph beforehand? And that was the first time I had my first, um, I guess, interaction with Kylie. I wouldn't say meet because it was so brief, but um, we waited. It was in the, it was in May. It was freezing cold. (laughs) Um, And it was funny. My friend kept saying to me, she's not going to come. She's not going to come. I'm like, what do you mean? She's not going to come. She's doing a show tonight. She's going to be here. (laughs) Um, And we waited and waited and waited. And a couple of other people started to show up and, she finally arrived and she, came, like, security knew that we had been waiting all day, so he brought her over to us first. And she goes, I'm right, sorry, guys, I'm really running late for my show. Yes, running on Minogue time. <laughs> I can't pose for photos. I'm happy to sign um, autographs for you because I'm really late, but if you want photos, just snap away. And I just had this camera of dads that I just took photos and when I got them developed they looked like the worst paparazzi (laughs) photos that you could ever see but I posted one recently on my Instagram and Kylie um, then posted it on her uh, Twitter and said, should I go back to the reddish blonde, strawberry blonde hair colour again? And I'm like, yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad you agree with that. Yeah. Well, then there you go. We'll parallel lives at that point in time. But that era, we had the kind of exact, exact same, same experience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's amazing. So, oh, and let's bring it back to the dress itself. Yeah. There was four in the set. Why dance Kylie specifically? I don't know. The colours look amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's something, I'm, I don't know. There's something about me that is always drawn to bright colours and that's probably one reason. Yeah. Um, it's just a nostalgia factor for me. Like there is something about that. It's what we grew up with for a certain period of time in regards to Kylie's image and it reflected it so well. But then at the same time, all these other images of Kylie amalgamate into that one lady that we know and admire and respect so much. But, yeah, it's there's just something about it. It is a simple design but yeah. I think it's just the way that it is like, and this goes back to William being the stylist. It's the way that it's styled on her that grabs your attention. It's the bright colours. It kind of also has a bit of a, um, a bit of an ABBA 
type oh, um, yeah. Yeah. look as well. Like they had their body suits, but it's yeah. kind of like a, a version of ABBA and who doesn't love ABBA? Um, is that but, like a, a sexy <laughs> nod to that? Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, it's it has that disco feel to yeah. it as well. So that's a part of, like if there could be a fifth Kylie in there, it would be disco Kylie. <laughs> and I think that that kind of represents that Kylie as well. Um, no accident that it's dance. I mean, with yeah. what's come since as well. It's and, come and, full circle again. Yeah. How many songs have that as a lyric, dance and then dancing itself as, yeah. as that song? So, yeah, so yes. I think that out of all of those four Kylies, I think dance Kylie will always sit at the top for me and I think that that's the reason why, whether it be music and but this image in particular, I don't know, there's just something about it that gets my attention. Um, and I was also reading as well that uh, there is a second version of this dress. Oh, wow. It's just done in a couple of yeah. different um, – diff- I think that the the stripes are, all, are different colours, but uh-huh. there's a second version that's done and I believe that that's at um, – the is sort of like catalogued with the Australian Performing Arts Collection as well. I'd love to see it one day. <laughs> but <laughs> Potentially, you never know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also even reading excerpts from Kylie's La 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 in regards to the styling and the dress as well, Willie paired it up with a pair of Kylie's um, favourite show shoes, I think showgirl shoes. They're gold, they've got diamantes on them. They're at the Australian Performing Arts Collection as well oh, and you can view them on um, online when you go through um, the Kylie collection. But they were paired up with those and Kylie's used those at the – because apparently they bring her good luck. Uh-huh. <laughs> so um, she, it's, but there's probably an obvious reason why she wore them in the music video. It's brought her luck with the single and the album doing so well. She wore them at the 2000 Olympics when she – oh, no, the Paralympics opening ceremony. And she also wore them on an, um, during the On a Night Like This tour when she performed physical. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. I and know exactly which ones you're talking about Speaking now. of physical as well, here's a little fun fact about this era – and regards to um, the Intimate Live Tour, Baz Luhrmann went to one of her shows too and saw her perform and that's where he got the idea to cast Kylie as the Green Fairy in Moulin Rouge. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, there you go. And I've seen that costume up close as well. <laughs> <laughs> and it is even better than what it looks like on screen. Screen doesn't capture the essence of it. But, yeah, and I think the same way as with this dress too when it comes to being on film, if you see the dress in person, there is... The turquoise stripe in the music video looks almost white, whereas when you look at it in person and you can go to the show notes as well to see the item and to reference what I'm actually talking about, the turquoise stripe is very prevalent when you see it in person. But if you watch the music video and if you did um, pause us earlier to watch the music video, you'll see what I mean in regards to that turquoise stripe. It almost looks white. Yeah. For me, uh, the thing that I kind of gravitate towards this and it could be said about all of the the characters in the video is that for the first time we had a costume that had a title that it, the fact yes. that it said dance Kylie on there you immediately were given the the sort of context that you needed to interpret it and and the filter to view it through yeah and that for her was something that was quite new we'd not seen her do that before or had that context before. Yeah. And now that when you do discuss it and if you speak to, well, speak to other fans, as soon as you say cute Kylie, people know exactly what image they're getting. You say dance Kylie, they know exactly what image they're getting or what we're referring to. So I get what you mean with that. This has been such a great um, opportunity to be able to speak about a piece and an era that means so much to me. I really appreciate you listening to me babble on for so long and I hope that you were able to get some words in because I loved listening to your stories too. I just love that. I mean, we've been friends for so long and even now we're still learning. I I didn't realise that this era was kind of quite parallel for both of us and that we hold it in such high regard. Very similar stories, living two different lives. It's a bit of like a sliding doors moment, I guess you could say. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Well, thank you all for listening to us. Uh, We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Kylie Behind the Scenes. And for more, 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 please um, join us again on our next episode as we rummage through Kylie's wardrobe one more time. 